Now, plating perfectly can be something of an esoteric art. Plating well is relatively easily and can be done at home, and I'll show you how I plated silver onto copper, though the steps for other metal combinations are very similar. First, you're going to want to add enough distilled water to a vessel to completely cover whatever you plan to have plated. Then you're going to want to add some acid to the water. I did acetic acid, uh, sulfuric acid will work just fine. I wouldn't recommend hydrochloric acid as the chloride ions could be oxidized into chlorine gas and you know. The specifics of how much acid to add depend on the volume of your solution, but in general you want to stick to a pH around 4-ish. Then I added a metal ion source to the solution, in this case silver nitrate. Keep in mind, whatever you, metal you want to plate another in has to be in the solution. In my example, I did not use deionized water, so the cloudiness you see is the result of silver chloride forming, which is insoluble in solution. But this silver chloride won't cause any issues to the electroplating. Next up, you're going to want to thoroughly clean whatever piece you plan to, to plate. You're also going to want to remove any oxides that may be present, in this case copper oxides. My soap actually had an antioxidant present in it, so it did actually clean the metal as you can see here. Um, this will help the, the plate stick much, much better to your object. Then as a final step to remove any remaining oils that may be present on the metal, I put it in a organic solvent. In this case, it was N-methyl pyrolidone, but you can use brake cleaner. Acetone would work fine. Um, gasoline would work actually pretty well. Next, you're gonna want a sacrificial piece of metal that is the same as the electrolyte in the solution and you're going to want to connect that to the positive terminal of your power source. I used a lantern battery, um, but a, a DC power supply would be much better, truthfully. After that, you're ready to start plating. You're going to want to connect the piece that you're going to plate to the negative terminal of your power supply. With this setup, electrons will be provided for the silver ions and solution to be reduced down to silver metal and plate your copper. Whatever your power source ends up being, it does need to be direct current and cannot use any AC power sources, as it just won't work. And adjusting the distance between your electrodes can adjust the voltage. So let's talk about voltage real quick. You're going to want to have a voltage of about 1.2 on the low end, all the way up to about 3. Uh, too much, too high of a voltage and you might get some weird side reactions. Um, too low of a voltage and you'll start producing hydroxide and react with the silver ions in solution producing silver oxide which you don't want and it are these hydroxide ions that are the reason we add acid to the solution so that they will react with hydroxide forming water again now because copper is below silver on the metal activity series it will naturally displace the silver ions in solution so i added this piece of copper to the solution with no current running through it to show you the difference between a natural deposition and an electrically induced one. Now the longer you let your uh, object get plated, the thicker the plated metal will become to a, to a certain extent. So I, I'm gonna let mine run for about 15 minutes, but in the meantime, I'm gonna show you an easier way to silver plate and give you some pros and cons at the end. As you can see, it just comes in a bottle and what you're gonna wanna do is take your object and just rub this paste onto it after cleaning, of course and it, it's pretty incredible it's just like a contact uh, i did test you have to rub it you can't just leave it on so but as you can see in about 20 seconds i plated this copper pipe and i didn't have to prepare any solutions or buy any uh reagents it was it's pretty convenient um but i'll discuss potential downsides at the end after 15 minutes of operation i'm going to now remove um both pieces of metal from the solution and inspect the quality of the plate on each of them. So first on the right we have the natural deposition of the silver and as you can see there is something going on there. And on the left I have the electroplated silver. So the first reveal I'll do is of the naturally de deposited silver. And as you can see it definitely worked a little bit but it's not a very thick coat um, and you can definitely see through it. Whereas with the uh, electroplated silver, it is a much thicker coat. And for jewelry, which is what I plan to electroplate, you will want a thicker coat as thinner ones will rub off and shove the base metal through the plate. 
On the left we've got the rub on plate and on the right we have the electro plate after a bit of polishing. Now you may be able to see, might not come through on the camera, but the one on the left actually has a yellow undertone indicating a thinner plate. And while the rub on um, paste is quite convenient and easy, this is the downside of it is you get a very thin plate that will rub off with minimal polishing. I thank you all for sticking around and watching. I hope you learned something. Have a good one.